wanted to study Japanese for years, but I have always felt like if I spend time studying Japanese, that would be time I was taking away from Korean, which is a language that I need to survive my daily life because I live in South Korea. But then eventually I got so burned out with studying Korean because I'd been studying it for many years that I thought now would be a good time to dive into another language. So I'm finally starting to study Japanese and today I'm gonna share with you guys how I've been going about that. So now my goal with Japanese is to focus on getting through all of the content at the N5 and N4 level and then get to a point where I can generally start working with materials like at N3 level because at that point I feel like I will be an intermediate Japanese speaker when it comes to learning languages because I also learn French and Korean. I have made so many mistakes as a language learner in the past that I feel really stalled my progress and created huge gaps between my language skills. Now, thanks to those mistakes, I really learned how to learn a language more efficiently. And this is my first time to actually be able to apply those lessons I've learned to a new language to my Japanese from the very beginning. So going into my Japanese studies, I knew I wanted to focus on listening comprehension and pronunciation, especially from day one. So even if I was going to be doing a lot of reading in Japanese, I always wanted to make sure that I picked resources that had some audio component because a mistake I have made in the past was focusing on what I call silent resources, where you get a lot of opportunities to read. Sometimes they can be helpful, but if that's all you're doing, you really kind of stunt your listening comprehension, and that also hurts your pronunciation, which then hurts your ability to speak the language well. So the idea with Japanese was if I focus on listening comprehension and pronunciation from the beginning, this will eliminate those gaps that I have experienced in my other language learning journeys. I also know that I wanted to focus on learning in context rather than like memorizing word lists or doing like fill in the blank grammar exercises. I just wanted to learn through natural context. Then lastly, I really wanted to do a lot of practice through speaking as in do a lot of shadowing. It's going to help build muscle memory so that later it'll be much easier for me to just spit these things out without having to think about it because it's something that I've like physically practiced in my mouth. So the first thing I knew I needed to do was I had to learn the hiragana and katakana alphabets, which they're basically the same alphabet, but just written differently. But there's like 40 plus characters in each of the alphabets, so it's actually a lot to memorize. And then to have to learn these before you really start diving into content, it's a little bit overwhelming, I felt. But then that's when I discovered on Duolingo for the Japanese language, there's like an extra tab that Duolingo has just to practice here to Ghana and Katakana. So I went through that on the Duolingo app and honestly, that was the method that worked for me. It was pretty repetitive, but I feel like I actually retained what I was learning. It wasn't just in my short-term memory. I just memorized this only for it to disappear a few days later. So for me personally, Duolingo was how I truly mastered those alphabets. So once I mastered the alphabets, I picked a resource and I signed up for italki lessons and I got going. So the resource I started to use at first was the Genki Elementary 1 textbook. And then when I was choosing a teacher on italki, I made sure to choose a teacher who could also speak Korean. The grammar in Japanese and Korean is much more related than between Japanese and English. And I knew going into my studies, I always wanted to be able to ask my teacher like, oh, is this like this in Korean? And if my teacher couldn't speak Korean, then I wouldn't be able to ask those questions. So for my case, I really wanted to make sure that I had a teacher who could speak Korean and Japanese. So going through the Genki textbook, what I did at first was I would turn to the vocab list in the book. And Genki also has like a free app that comes with it. And I would use the free app. Um, to listen and repeat to the pronunciation of the vocabulary. And then I would just read through all of the grammar descriptions for that chapter and I would just like highlight anything that I felt was important to me. So I would go through the practice exercises and I would, you know, check myself. I would try and come up with the sentence and then I would listen to the answer, but then I would also be shadowing the answer to make sure that like I'm mimicking the whole like sentence intonation and pronunciation as well. I would actually spread this out over a few days and I would go back and do the same practice problems. And then eventually in the end, I would get to a point where I didn't necessarily need to shadow the answer. I could just say it pretty quickly. And the idea behind this for me was if I can just spit it out and it sounds good, like intonation, pronunciation, then I feel like that sentence pattern is like locked in my brain. And not just that, I also have the muscle memory, like my voice, sorry, not my voice, like my muscles are familiar with creating this. I also, which I told myself 
I wasn't going to do, but I did. I also used Memrise to practice the vocabulary words for the chapter because I found a deck on Memrise where like all of the words were already there and there was an audio recording of them. So I would go through Memrise and I would just like listen and I would repeat the words as I was learning them, as I was typing the answers. And yes, I added the Japanese keyboard to my computer and I practiced typing in Japanese as well, which was a little bit frustrating, but. <laughs> Then with my teacher, we basically just went back over the Genki material and I repeated a lot of the exercises I was doing in the Genki book with my teacher. But then my teacher would do like a little bit more of like free prompting where she would take what we were learning and try to ask like questions um, in a new way from the book to kind of like give me a chance to think and come up with more of my own answer versus like constantly just like answering the book. As a beginner learning Japanese, I honestly doubted whether I could actually do any sort of free talking or have any sort of conversation because I just didn't know much Japanese. But after I gave it a try with my teacher, I felt like I was able to actually do a lot more than I had expected. I also think I learned a lot of new words and picked up a lot of new things very quickly from this free talking that I did with my teacher because we incorporated things that I was already learning and then we built upon that. And naturally, as I wanted to incorporate more words and expressions that related to my daily life, my teacher was able to help me then fill in those blanks and fill in that gap in knowledge for the things that were most relevant to me. Like, yeah, it didn't sound perfect. It wasn't the most eloquent answers, but I was able to eventually communicate on a basic level what I wanted to communicate. And I was just a beginner. This was actually my first experience really working with a teacher, like one-on-one -on -one from the beginning. And after doing so, I, I highly recommend it because you can actually do a lot more than you realize even in the beginning. But then at some point while I was going through the Genki textbook, I think like chapter five or six, I started to feel like this is not working. Like just suddenly all of the methods that was working for me, everything I was doing was going well. And then I was just like, eh. Now, one thing I have learned in my experiences as a language learner and even in my former life as a scientist is if you are doing something several times and it does not consistently work, then you need to trust the data. As humans, we tend to favor routine and we stick to the same approach because it's what's comfortable to us. But if the data is telling you another story, then you need to listen to it. So when the Genki textbook for learning Japanese no longer seemed like it was working for me, I recognized this as a moment that, hey, you know, maybe I should consider trying something else. Maybe this is the time that I should pivot and find something that's going to work better for me. But then I kind of quickly realized that I feel like there weren't that many great resources out there for beginners learning Japanese. And around this time, I actually went to Tokyo. So I went to the Kinokuniya bookstore in Shinjuku, which has like a big section of Japanese textbooks. And I browsed around there and honestly, I was just like, there's nothing here that really like gets my fancy. And again, I felt like there's much more resources for you once you hit like N3 level, intermediate Japanese level. And I was like, but what about now? <laughs> but then I got the brilliant idea. Why don't I just look at books in Korea for Koreans who want to learn Japanese? And I got this one. <laughs> so in this book, there's about 16 chapters that are all centered around one or two dialogues. And then there's a couple pages where they go over all of the grammar that is introduced in the dialogue and give some brief explanation and practice sentences. And then one thing that I really loved about this book and why I bought it was that each chapter also comes with a free 30 minute or so video lesson on YouTube that you can watch. And in that video lesson, they go through all of the grammar in that chapter. They do tons of practice with you and you can actually like listen and repeat with a Japanese teacher. So I really love the fact that there was free lessons, lots of shadowing practice, lots of reading practice, lots of opportunities to get listening comprehension practice. Then something really cool about this book is that like in the beginning, they divide all of the textbook content, like all 16 chapters into a 28 day plan for you. Now the content in the book is not that intense. Like it's like four or five pages per chapter. So it's not like you're cramming a lot in, but the idea was like, if you consistently do everything day after day, all of the concepts build on top of each other, they use a lot of the same vocabulary. So over time, the grammar, the words you're learning, you just naturally acquire them through repetition. And this book does not shy away from using kanji. They introduce a lot of new kanji in the dialogues. And then, you know, you get a chance to listen to them. You start to understand what the word is based on the sound or the hiragana spelling. And then you just come across the kanji often enough and you come across those words often enough throughout the book that eventually you find, at least I found, by the end of the book, it was like, hey, I learned a ton of new kanji and a ton of new words this way just by constantly reading and listening. 
After going through this textbook, I felt pretty confident about my Japanese listening comprehension, about my reading skills, my ability to read a lot of the kanji that I have encountered so far, and my pronunciation as well. And although I was just doing a lot of shadowing and not really doing like a ton of speaking practice, I do feel like if I was to go to Japan right now versus if I had gone like right before I bought this book, I do feel like my ability to communicate in Japanese has like just shot up to here. And in addition to this book, I was also doing Duolingo for or as much as I could like I would do five minutes a day or so I mean I didn't do it every day but I was just using Duolingo along the way but the nice thing about using Duolingo is I felt like it exposed me to a lot of new vocabulary now I know many of you guys who are watching this video might not be Korean speakers so books like this might not be something that you can use but if you are looking for something similar or you just want to find any sort of book for Japanese I just highly recommend looking for anything that is very like dialogue focus that has a lot of listening practice or at least if it has a ton of reading practice it has some sort of audio component actually i feel like i would highly recommend just finding leveled readers in japanese because they tend to come with audio and i feel like learning japanese through just reading these little stories and listening to them and shadowing them is actually going to be much more helpful than something kind of in my opinion archaic like genki so now let's talk a little bit about where i'm at now with my japanese because i just finish this book but actually something really cool again about this book is that it came with this challenge book so there are 16 stories in this book and it uses a lot of the same grammar and words that you were learning in the main book so it's kind of meant to finish the main book and then you can jump into these stories now the stories in this challenge book they actually include a lot more kanji than i know a lot more new words a lot of grammar that i'm not familiar with but I feel like it's designed along with this textbook. So the idea is <laughs> it's meant to be a challenge, but I'm happy about that because by the time I finish getting through all these stories, I feel like it's going to really help my vocabulary and really bridge that gap between beginner to intermediate. So right now with my Japanese, I'm just reading short stories. I'm going through the stories, listening to the audio and trying to look up any sort of words or grammar that I don't know from the story and just focusing on comprehension. Then after I've listened to the story, I'll go back and I shadow it a ton of times so that I can get the pronunciation down, I can get the intonation down, and I just want to make sure that if there's any parts of speaking this story aloud that feels kind of like a tongue twister for me, I really want to keep practicing that until it no longer feels like that because that's kind of your mouth and your muscles getting used to this new way of pronouncing things. After that, I will just try and read aloud by myself just to see how I sound, see that I'm comfortable with it. In addition to that, I spend a little bit of time each day, for the most part, doing a little bit of Duolingo just to get exposure to new vocabulary, get some extra practice in. And when I'm finished going through all of the stories in the challenge book that I'm working on, it also comes with an N5 and an N4 practice test. So I think the next thing that I'll do is I will take the N5 practice test and then the N4 practice test just to see how I do. And then I think I'm going to focus more on leveled readers because I just want to keep focusing on reading native content and listening to native content and learn through context. And yeah guys that's kind of where i'm at right now so i hope you guys found my experiences helpful and honestly i'm curious how things are going for you guys don't be afraid to let me know down in the comments how your studies are going